that changing tourist behaviour is just about raising their awareness? It's not. If it were that easy, we wouldn't have a problem. Over and over again, we see people who are environmentally aware behaving in ways that are certainly not good for the environment. What's going on here? Why are tourists resisting our efforts? We've asked tourists that exact question. The tourists we interviewed were active members of environmental organizations. But to our great surprise, when they went on holiday, they did not necessarily make environmentally friendly choices. They gave us a number of reasons for this. Some denied that their trip had any negative consequences whatsoever. Some looked at what other tourists were doing and concluded that their own behavior wasn't so bad. Some felt it wasn't up to them to change the situation. It's the responsibility of government or industry. Others said that they didn't have enough information or enough time or enough money to make changes. Some even argued that they don't want to think about their environmental responsibilities while they're on holiday. And finally, some feel that their travel supports local economies and communities, and that this outweighs any negative environmental impacts. So we have a challenge, because many sustainability initiatives aren't going to work unless the tourist is engaged and involved. We're going to look at this problem at three different points, prior to travel, on site and after the tourist experience. Our examples are from specific studies, but the principles we discuss can be applied across a range of tourism, hospitality and event settings. Let's start prior to travel with a recent carbon offsetting study. Many airlines have carbon offsetting programs that allow tourists to pay a small additional amount to offset the carbon emissions of their flight. However, UQ research shows that only 10% of passengers actually do this. Why? According to one of my colleagues here at UQ, Professor Brent Ritchie, there are two key barriers to carbon offsetting. Lack of knowledge and awareness of such schemes and the public perception that offsetting schemes are not transparent, not credible and confusing. One solution is to modify the carbon offsetting question that passengers see when they book a flight online. Our recent research using eye tracking confirms that awareness of carbon offsetting is low. We found that to be effective, you need an online message that attracts passengers' attention. They shouldn't be able to skim over it. You need pictures. You need short text. You need content that highlights how carbon offsetting improves people's lives. Once tourists arrive at their destination, there are other ways of nudging them into more environmentally friendly behaviour. UQ Research has been investigating this issue in hotels. Did you know that every time a hotel room is cleaned, it uses 100 millilitres of chemicals, 1.5 kilowatt hours of electricity and 35 litres of water? In any hotel, guests can opt out of room cleaning. This is not new, but uptake is low. Even if offered an incentive, uptake in luxury hotels is only about 8%. In one of our studies, guests in a four-star hotel were told that if they opted out of daily room cleaning, they would receive free drinks. Free drinks signaled that cost savings were equitably shared between hotel and guests. This was explained to the guests. This campaign resulted in a 42% reduction on the usual number of rooms cleaned, a solution that can be easily implemented in hotels and guest satisfaction did not drop. Interestingly, adding an environmental appeal to this offer made absolutely no difference. One of the key messages here is consistency. If organisations explain what behaviour is required, why it is required, and how they themselves are doing the right thing, tourists are more likely to cooperate. For example, our studies at Mon Repo Turtle Rookery reveal that when guides explain that turtles won't come up to the beach to lay eggs if there's light, or noise, tourists are quite happy to wait in silence and darkness. They value the animal's well-being and comfort over their own. So it seems that tourists do care about environmental issues. They even say they are willing to pay more for environmentally friendly products. But do tourists actually follow through on this? Sadly, no. 
Tourists say they prefer environmentally friendly vacations, yet most don't book them. A recent study surveyed tourists on two boat tours. The two tours were identical, except one was eco-certified. 60% said that environmental considerations affected their tour choice. Yet, once on the boat, only 12% were able to state correctly whether their tour was eco-certified or not. This means what people say when it comes to environmental sustainability is not reliable. Unless the niche market of environmentally sustainable tourists is targeted, the marketing value of eco-certification is low. Real tourist behavior needs to be studied to identify the most effective ways of reducing tourists' environmental footprint. We found the same in our wildlife tourism studies. Visits to zoos and natural areas do enhance tourists' environmental knowledge and attitudes, and tourists fully intend to change their environmental behavior. Immediately after their visit, they're fired up. But once they get home, uh-oh, into the pit of apathy they go. Across a range of sites, our studies show that three months after their visit, only 7 to 11 percent of tourists have acted on their intentions. We'll say it again, changing tourist environmental behaviour is difficult. So, how do we help tourists act on their intentions? Well, we know that people do better if they have a support system in place. Our studies in national parks, zoos and aquariums show that post-visit support kits, emails, prompts, reminders, and stories about what's happening at the site, particularly animal hatches and dispatches, all help to keep tourists motivated to follow through on their intentions. Games, quizzes, and activities that target children are particularly effective because children are often the catalyst for their family's environmental behavior change. Resources such as websites and Facebook pages with videos, photographs, and strategies for action can also be used to educate, engage and support tourists after the visit. The other important element is to encourage tourists to reflect. UQ professors Roy Ballantyne and Jan Packer, global experts in this field, explain. Our research has revealed that reflection is an important component of learning in tourism and leisure context, especially the kind of learning that changes a person's environmental behaviour. Reflection is an activity in which people recapture the experience, think about it, mull it over and evaluate it. Tourists need to be encouraged to think deeply about what they've seen and heard and to make a personal response. Reflection involves people's thoughts and their emotions, their attitudes and beliefs. They're thinking through how these should affect their behaviour. Our research has shown that ecotourism experiences have great potential to give people a reason to care about wildlife. The role of the tourism operator is to encourage visitors to reflect on what they're seeing and what it means in their lives. Jan, what are some of the ways in which tourism operators can achieve this? Hmm. Well, let's think about the different stages of the experience. At the beginning, you can prepare visitors so that they expect and appreciate the education component of the experience. During the experience, you can draw attention to emotional responses, such as a sense of wonder and awe, excitement, or a sense of privilege. And you can encourage people to use their imagination. You can provide a time and a space for people to reflect, maybe like a debriefing session, or encourage people to talk it over with their companions. And finally, remember to stay in touch with people after the experience to help them keep thinking about what they've experienced and how they can put their good intentions into practice. As you can see, persuading tourists to adopt environmentally friendly lifestyles is tricky. Tourists are particularly good at making excuses. They're also good at saying one thing but doing another. To be successful, you'll need to walk the talk, provide incentives, show that it's a partnership and that your organisation is doing the right thing. Provide your guests with prompts, reminders and support, both on-site and after the visit. Above all, give them a reason to care. If we can get tourists engaged, if we can find ways to make their behaviour more environmentally sustainable, then together we really can make a difference. Grant Bowie, the CEO and Executive Director of MGM China Holdings and Adjunct Professor at UQ, sums it up perfectly. The tourism industry and the industry that I'm involved with 
now realises that to, to be sustainable, we need to start looking at the world in a different way. We've seen the rise of industrialisation, but now as we move into the age of consumerism, where people are more interested in ex gaining experiences than things, we know that we need to build sustainability as a core attribute of our businesses, whether that's environmental sustainability, whether it's cultural, to whatever facet of our, our lives we, we look at, we now need to take a greater look about how do we leave the world in a better place than we, than we received it. Tourism and all the things that are focused around that recognises that the life we lead in the future is going to be dependent of how we treat the globe today. And so as we move forward, all of us need to develop our sustainability strategies, strategies to cover off on energy, environment, and most importantly, creating a world where the people can socially interact, understand each other, and more importantly, live in peace and harmony.